Seven things you probably didn't know, you need to know. I'm Jamie East and this, this is the Smart Seven. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday the 3rd of December and it's Fuel Poverty Awareness Day. And a big happy birthday to Ozzy Osbourne, Eamon Holmes, Julianne Moore and Daryl Hannah. There were 53,945 new cases of COVID-19 yesterday and 141 additional deaths. There were also 10 new cases of the Omicron variant in the UK, while India's reported its first cases. And in South Africa, where the variant was first detected, health officials say the new variant's become dominant in the country and is driving a sharp increase in new infections, with cases doubling in the last 24 hours. Here in the UK, the government's ordered an extra 114 million vaccine doses to be used for potential booster programmes. Health Secretary Sajid Javid says the UK needs to be prepared. They will be the the latest vaccines that they will have, because as we're seeing right now, there's a new variant, uh, there's there's potentially new variants in the future. We know that COVID's going to be around for a while. We have to learn to live with it. And one of the ways to learn to live with it is to make sure we've got the vaccines that we need and that they're future proof. This move comes as new research shows that Moderna and Pfizer boosters are the most effective and give a significant boost to immune systems. Pfizer CEO Dr Albert Baller told the BBC in an exclusive interview that we can expect to be getting booster shots for some time to come. If we have to make a guess based on everything I have seen so far, I would say that likely will be needed annual revaccinations to maintain very robust and very, very high level of protection. The Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle, had another victory in court on Thursday in her long-running battle with the Mail on Sunday. The case centred around the publication of a letter she wrote to her father and the Court of Appeal rejected the newspaper's request to have a full trial on issues of privacy. Court of Appeal judge Sir Geoffrey Voss said the paper couldn't justify publishing a letter that was personal, private and not in the public interest. The judge had correctly decided that whilst it might have been proportionate to publish a very small part of the letter, For that purpose, it was not necessary to publish half the contents of the five-page letter as Associated Newspapers had done. In a statement, Meghan said, This is a victory not just for me, but for anyone who's ever felt scared to stand up for what's right. Mike Pence went through a lot as Donald Trump's vice president. Apart from spending all that time watching Fox News with his boss, he also found himself in harm's way during the events of January the 6th when Trump loyalists erected a gallows and chanted, Hang Mike Pence. And he's been chatting with the Christian Broadcasting Network and says he's no regrets about doing the right thing, even though there was no legal basis to do anything else. I know in my heart of hearts that on that day, we did our duty under the Constitution. No regrets. But let me say this. I I, I don't know if President Trump and I will ever see eye to eye on that day. Mm -hmm. Uh, Or that many of our most ardent supporters Mm -hmm. will agree with my decision that day. But I know I did the right thing. Do you remember Matt Lavish Holiday's Hancock? The former health secretary caught on camera in his office kissing a co-worker is back, back, back. Yeah, he's already started his apology tour a mere five months after his sacking. Well, he says he quit. Boris won't say what happened exactly. Matt turned up on ITV's Peston to explain why it's all about him and his personal life and not about the fact that this all went on in the middle of a full-blown pandemic. As you can imagine, the first thing that I had to... that I focused on was was my personal life. And then when I focused on my professional responsibilities, I I decided that I had to resign. I'd blown up every part of my life. I concentrate on my personal life first, as you can probably imagine. I I let a lot of people down, and sorry to the people who I who I hurt. Oh, still to come on the Smart 7, plenty of drama as Man United take on Arsenal, and Alec Baldwin finally speaks out. Right after this. You're listening to the Smart 7. If you're enjoying it, you might also like the Smart 7 Island Edition. Just search and follow us on your favourite podcast platform. Three, two, there were two games in the Premier League last night. Spurs beat Brentford 2-0, but the Man United-Arsenal game was full of dramatic twists and turns. Arsenal scored while David De Gea was lying in the goal mouth after an injury, followed by a dramatic United comeback that finished with Ronaldo's 800th goal and a penalty to finish 3-2. 
Then caretaker manager Michael Carrick announced that he's quitting after three wins during his time in charge. I was meant to take some time off after I finished playing and I promised the family that we'd have some time together and uh, it's never happened and I think I've thrown myself into working here for, for so long that um, it just feels like it's the right time to step away. I mean, I'll be back around the place, I'm not, I'm not disappearing, but um, yeah, it's just, it's just the right time and what a way to finish, it's a perfect night really. The events on the set of movie Rust echoed around the world since the tragic shooting of cinematographer Halia Hutchins. Alec Baldwin was at the centre of events and apart from one odd roadside press conference, he hasn't really spoken about what actually happened. He finally sat down to tell his side of the story on Thursday night with ABC News host George Stephanopoulos. Well, the trigger wasn't pulled. I didn't pull the trigger. So you never pulled the trigger? No, 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 no. no. I, I would never point a gun at anyone and pull a trigger at them, never. How did a real bullet get on that set? I have no idea. Someone put a live bullet in a gun, a bullet that wasn't even supposed to be on the property. I think back and I think of what could I have done. Is it too early for a Christmas movie? I mean, it is December and it's been a long year and technically it's called Boxing Day so it's not really a Christmas movie, okay? Well, Boxing Day hits cinemas today starring Amil Amin, Aja Naomi King and none other than Little Mix's Leanne Pinnock. Leanne plays a successful international pop star, while it's her first movie role so not much of a stretch, whose ex-boyfriend returns from America for the holiday season with his new fiancé. I wanted to introduce you to my fiancé. Melvin! Georgia Filaron Show is your ex-girlfriend. She is a superstar. It is in the past. We've had sex to her music. Wow, fam. It just got worse. <laughs> Do you believe in love? Where is Mr. Hollywood with his American princess? Does he think he is Prince Harry? <laughs> Don't be said to me when you first ask me out. Choose me. Lisa! We're in the best thing that ever happened to me. It'll be all right in the end. It'll be all right. It's not the end. This has been the Smart Seven. Wherever you're listening, do us a favor and hit the follow button. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Have a great day. Written, produced, and published by Daft Doris.